Let me from the start, won't let this end. I just wanna go to the left. Hi, everybody. My name is Danny Wells, and I am a regional vice president with Arbonne International and independent consultant. I love saying that. I do love saying it. I can't wait to say I am an executive national vice president and independent consultant with Arbonne International. We are ready for a change of title. So it is Sunday the 19th of February 2017 and I am still buzzing from yesterday where we had our team leadership academy, the Wells region, the McCarthy region, joined forces with all of the local sidelines as well and people travelled from all over the UK to come together in Kettering to celebrate all of the success and achievements that our teams have had over the past few months, over the past year. And you know what? The training was exceptional. We had just the most incredible speakers up on stage. So as this is our area Zoom, I'll just say a massive shout out to District Manager Stacey Blackley who got on stage and trained on Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And she pulled up Suzanne Wells, Jane Brown and Kelly Brown to talk about their before and after starting the arm business. We also had Natalie Crawford, which was incredible, and then Mel Hennessy stepped in as well to talk about her story. And um, we had Danny Cowie, Jen Cowie. Um, who else did we have? I'm trying to think now. I can't even think from our region. So, Carla. Yeah, CJ, Carol. Um, Kelly Bromley, amazing. Kelly Bromley, yeah. Was that everybody? Jenna McCarthy was amazing, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah, she was. Incredible. Absolutely incredible day. So I'm still like vibrating with excitement because of the call. But I'm going to get on with our training tonight. So this is our area training. We've got three speakers tonight. We've got a brand new district manager, Agatha, who is actually from Fiona McCarthy's region, but has agreed to be our special guest speaker tonight. She's going to be speaking first. I'm going to introduce her in just a second. She's going to talk about her journey to district, um, a Polish journey to district. Then we're going to have Claire Russell-Smith, sorry, District Manager Claire Russell-Smith and District Manager in Qualification Emma Wood do their training that they actually did yesterday at Leadership Academy. So inside the mind of a procrastinator, they're going to redo that training, which was just fabulous. And then we're going to end with District Manager Sammy Jo Lewis talking about hearing the emotions in your messages. So you're in for a treat over the next hour. So I'm going to introduce our first speaker. So Agata Thorma is actually in Poland right now. She has built her business to the first of only four levels, so the district level, and she promoted last month. She's an absolute incredible woman. She's sponsored by Sylvia, and she's just, she's just blowing everybody away. And she's the most helpful, kind person because she's always willing to help other people. If she's got any information, she's happy to share that with other people. So she's going to talk to us tonight about her journey, a Polish journey to district. So please welcome District Manager Agata Forma. Hi, good evening, everybody. Yes, my name, thank you, Danny, for a lovely introduction. I, did, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, my name is Agatha Forma, and I am an independent consultant with Arbonne International, and as you rightly said, newly promoted district manager, which gives me Woo! great pleasure to say, uh, because I've wanted to, to get to this level for so long, but yeah, I'm here now. And uh, yes, everybody, I'm sat here at my mom's house in Poland, which is great thing in this business you can just do it from anywhere as long as you've got wi-fi connection you are just good to go um last night i went to car presentation in poland which was also great experience um but danny asked me to share my story my journey to district which um i'm gonna basically share with you um so i am polish national i came to the uk 13 years ago uh, i was introduced to arbon in uh, May 2015 and at the time I wasn't looking for any business opportunities because I thought I had quite comfortable life. I was um, working, I, I, I work as a um, generalist advisor at Citizens Advice Bureau in Peterborough and I also run another business which involves cooking demonstration. Um, so I wasn't looking for anything, but what was happening to me, I was suffering with really bad acne and um, I've suffered with acne for 10 years and I have been trying so many different products, really cheap brands, 
uh, really most expensive brands, anything I could get my hands on just to basically clean my skin because my confidence was just horrendous um, as a result of acne. Um, and like Danny said, I was introduced to Ibon by Sylvia, um, who basically spoke about the products and she said, well, why don't you try Ibon products? And I thought, okay, well, I've got nothing to lose. But I, I was very skeptical because I, I, I've tried so many products and they just didn't work. But after two months, my acne went and I was like, well, I've got to do this. Um, so as we share, you know, journey to uh, restaurant, cinema and so on, I started doing the same thing with Ibon. Um, and I started to build my client base, which was amazing. But I was doing it on and off for the first nine months, kind of not putting really my heart into it. Um, however, what changed for me was AAC in September 2016 in Birmingham. That was the big, big change for me. Uh, when I have met so many different people, so many successful and inspiring people who, you know, you, for those of you who went to AEC, uh, probably you, you feel the same about the event. That was my first event um, on such a big scale. Um, and it's just blown my mind away. I was like, I really want to do this. You know, it was really exciting seeing so many happy faces, everyone cheerful and Oh, it was just incredible. I'm still in my head. I'm still remembering, feeling the vibes from that, you know, those two days. Um, so when I came back from AEC, um, I went into Qual, and I remember listening to Dani before, and she was raving about you've got to go to AEC. She was recommending to everyone, and I was like, so when I went to AEC, and I actually realize that whatever Danny said prior to AEC was so right. When you go to events like this GTC AEC, your business does grow. So you've got to attend every single event. Um, so as I said, I came back from AEC and I have, um, I went into qualification. Um, at the same time, I didn't set in my head whether I'm gonna do it over two months, three months, I knew I just, I want to go basically achieve this trip. Um, but it, it did take me quite a while um, because again, September, October, I, I now feel I wasn't putting my 100%, although I really wanted it, but now looking back at my November, December um, activity com in comparison to September, October, I know in the first two months I wasn't putting enough effort into it therefore i didn't complete it um so towards the end uh, finally i have managed to complete the qualification in january on the 31st of january this year in and it took me three months so november december and january um and I have to say, it does feel really nice. And, you know, it, it kind of boasts boast my um, business as well, because people, obviously I have posted a lot of um, information on Facebook and I had great response from people who I haven't spoken before about the business or even if I did say something, they, they were not um, kind of responding to me. But after, um, after my promotion, I have received a lot of messages, you know, from people interested to know more about what I do, um, messages just really, you know, congratulating me, which was great because I was able to, to connect with people. Um, and I have to say, since completing the district, the confidence that I have, I've, I've always, I think I've always been a confident person, but going district and completing it, it gave me enormous amount of um, confidence in a sense that literally on the 1st of February, I sat down, I've opened my diary and I thought, right, I've only got 28 days to do 2,500 QV, so I better get into action. And 
I just wrote loads of kind of dates where I can do something, activities, when I can um, go and meet new people. Um, it gave me such a confidence even to speak to strangers because I now feel, now I feel I've got a business. I'm not just a consultant. I've actually got a business um, and I'm quite proud to say this and start conversation with people. She is incredible. Um, so, and in, in this, uh, sorry, in February so far, I have, so not today is 18th, 19th, is it the 20th? 20th, I think today. So I had, I think, 18 product um, exposures to new people. Now, I've never done it before. So it was like, you know, if I've done one product exposure a week, that was great. But since I've, um, I went district, I was like, every single day, someone is trying my products. Um, that's because I feel confident, you know, I've achieved something. So now I'm in a position to help other people and try to inspire them. Now, I've always been a person who really wanted to inspire people. Um, as I said, I feel I, I've always been a confident person and I, I'm kind of, I'm those people who, if, if I've got a problem, I won't cry about it. Well, sometimes I do, but I won't, I will just think of a solution. So I've got a problem. I've got to get over it. I've got to find solution. When I, um, obviously being an advisor, I often, it's kind of part, part of my job to, um, you know, um, basically give people advice um, how to achieve problem, you know, how to resolve the problems. So it is part of me, but sometimes it's, people do look up to you and, um, you know, although they listen to you and look up to you to what, what you recommend or what you do, but they are not able to kind of sustain the advice given. So now doing this business and putting my skills and experience into this, I now feel I just want to help everyone achieve what people in Arbonne have. So, you know, whether you are looking for more time with your family or more money, um, I feel that if, he, if they are just going to kind of, if I can inspire someone, um, that, would, that would be great. So my top tips, just to wrap up, because I, I, I'm looking at the time here, just to wrap up. Um, so if you are into qualification or if you're a consultant or at any other level and you wish to uh, promote, um, definitely get into activity. Uh, be confident in what you are doing uh, because people will sense whether you are or not, whether you are talking from the bottom of, bottom of your heart and whether you are talking from your own experience rather than someone else's. Um, so be confident about what you are doing. Attend every single event which you, which you are able to, which you can, because um, you are learning every single time you are learning something new from it. So incredible. Um, meeting new people. Um, just do whatever you are doing with the passion um, and be, be the inspiration. Like AAC 2016, just be the inspiration for everyone because what we have is just incredible um, and I, for me obviously I know um, the English side to it whatever we experience in Britain so yet last night I had opportunity to attend <coughs> sorry car presentation in Poland and that gave me opportunity to see how things are run in Poland um, and very similar to how we do it in England but again it's almost, I've learned so much, so many new things there um, because it's another country. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite lucky I can come to Poland and see, you know, how other countries run. So if you've got any opportunity to go to another urban country, I would recommend that you, you do go because you can uh, make new connections, make new friends and just always learn something new. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, and yeah, I look forward to hearing the rest of the speakers. Thank you. You got the healing that I want. Fantastic, Pekita. That was incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that story with us and for giving us those tips as well. I think you've really inspired quite a lot of people. And the fact that you did this while you're in Poland as well, just 
epitomizes the leader that you are. And it's very clear to all of us here that you're not gonna stay at district. The way that you're building and the way that you're growing, you will be going straight into the second level. So area qualification and area complete. You're just fabulous. You and Sylvia, you make a fabulous team as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay, so that's our first fabulous speaker. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce Claire and Emma. So. District Manager Claire Russell Smith and District Manager in Qualification Emma Wood did a phenomenal training yesterday on inside the mind of a procrastinator and it was so funny. My belly was aching at the end of their talk. And my ma you know, like, has anyone ever been to like a wedding or if you've got married yourself and you're constantly having photos taken that you get jaw ache because you're just smiling the whole time? That is what I was like yesterday because I was in tears. And I remember I went to go and see Claire in her own day, see one of her performances recently. And I took Luke William with me and he said, Are you really looking forward to leadership? And I said, Yeah. And he goes, what, what are you really looking forward to? And I said, I'm really looking forward to like, all of the speakers and seeing people on the stage that are not used to it, take that stage and talk. I said, but I'm really looking forward to Emma and Claire's talk because it's just so flipping true. And um, so Claire has been so lovely enough to um, scrap her original training for tonight to redo this training with Emma. So absolutely, you're in for a massive treat, anyone that hasn't seen it. So I'm going to introduce brand new district manager, Claire Russell smith and district manager in qualification, Emma Wood. <laughs> right, I'll, um, I've got all the slides, Emma. Okay. Emma, I've got all the slides, so we'll screen share on mine, but um, obviously the screen will pop up whenever Emma's talking as well. And um, just to say that, um, hopefully my kids won't interrupt, but Anything we can live in happen. hope. Yeah, we can live, we'll roll with it. <laughs> we will roll with it. Okay. So, right, let me screen share. We should be all ready. Okay, it's done it straight away. Wow, that was amazing. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, Emma. Hi everyone. So today we'll be giving you some interesting facts that will help your everyday life. Oh yeah, sorry, that's me. <laughs> um, okay, for instance, Emma and I do a lot of research on the internet, which is mainly scientific. So this means that other things often get pushed out the way, like our housework, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> like housework or actually cooking a proper dinner. So we're here we have a good example. Okay, so the duck-billed platypus is one of only two types of mammal to lay eggs. It's also semi-aquatic. The male has a spur on one of its back feet, which although won't kill you, will be immensely painful. Claire, what are you doing? We don't need to know this. Ah, uh, but it is really interesting. <laughs> no, it's not. Have you been Googling this stuff when you should have been working your business? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> but you're just as bad as Emma. I've seen your browser history, really. I mean, bedroom decorating ideas on Instagram. Mr. Bloom from CBeebies? What is that all about? <laughs> right, that's enough. Let's get back to it. Focus, please. So when I studied travel and tourism and Claire studied performing arts and sports science, we both had to do projects which had a deadline. And when a normal student has to write an assignment, they may plan it like this. So you get some work done in the first few weeks so you can do the best work possible and not struggle near the end. I would plan it like that and then I'd find the first few weeks would slip by and so I'd have to revise the plan. Then the middle few few weeks would go by and I wouldn't really write words so I ended up here. So one month turned into two weeks, then one week and then it was two days before the deadline and still not having written a single word. So I did the only thing I could, I panic wrote the assignment and usually pulling an all-nighter and praying it was enough to get me at least a pass. So imagine my surprise when I did my last assignment and I got a call from my tutor saying it was the best one they'd read yet. Obviously that 
didn't actually happen but I just wanted to enjoy you thinking I was amazing just for a moment <laughs> okay so I was the same as Emma when I was studying and it really got us both thinking about why we are the way we are we had a theory that the brains of procrastinators were different than the brains of non-procrastinators. Emma, what's this? How did this get in here? Oh. Okay, so anyway, from my contacts when I worked in the NHS, I actually knew somebody, somebody who worked in an MRI scan, uh, scan lab, and they let me scan my brain and the brain of a non-procrastinator so we could compare them now, we've, brought, we've got them here, um, we're going to show you. Now, I want you to look carefully to see if you notice a difference. Don't worry if it looks a bit scientific, don't worry if it looks a bit technical, you should be able to notice something. So, here is the brain of a non-procrastinator. Yeah, I like this. And now, here's my brain. Now, there is an obvious difference, as you can see. Both brains have a rational decision maker, but the procrastinator's brain has an instant gratification monkey. So what does this mean for the procrastinator? Now, everything is fine usually until, until this happens. Monkey comes and ruins everything. Okay, Charlie, Dad wants you. Sorry guys. What? Get your bedroom. Sammy, go on. Off you go. Go and do it now. Okay. Right. Anyway, so everything's fine until uh, this happens. So the rational decision maker decides to get some work done, but the monkey doesn't like that plan. So it takes the wheel and says, actually, we're not going to, res um, we're going to research Instagram for bedroom decorating ideas, then read up on the duck billed platypus. Check if there's anything new in the fridge since 10 minutes ago. Then we're going on a YouTube adventure, starting with inspirational talks from Denzel Washington and finishing up watching six hamsters going round a play wheel and falling off. All of that's going to take a little while, so we're not going to have any time to get work done today. Sorry. <laughs> so as you can tell, the instant gratification monkey is not the kind of person you want to driving your brain. He lives in the moment, has no sense of work and only cares about two things, easy and fun. Easy and fun is fine if you're a dog. In fact, you'll be a huge success. Emma! What's this doing here? Honestly, your Googling's getting ridiculous. I know he's the hottest one on CBeebies, but come on. <laughs> But if you're a human, you need the balance of the rational decision maker so you can function in the modern world. You need this to make goals, be productive and help others in your team with their, their business too. Sometimes the monkey is fine when you're doing something fun with your family on holiday or seeing a theatre show, etc. And that's why at times there's an overlap. It's good to have fun times and as a whole person you need this. But sometimes it's necessary to do things that are harder and less fun for the sake of your business or your goals. And that's when you have a conflict. And this is where the procrastinator seems to spend a lot of time in this orange zone. An easy and fun place which is entirely out of the make sense circle, which we'll call the dark playground. Now, a lot of you have been to this place. I know you'll recognise it. It's a place. <laughs> where leisure activities happen when they are not supposed to be happening. The fun you have in the dark playground isn't actually fun as it's completely unearned. And the whole time spent there is, is filled with guilt, anxiety and self-hatred, kind of quite normal, typical procrastinator feelings really. So when you're in this situation with the monkey behind the wheel, how does the procrastinator procrastinator get themselves back here to this blue zone a less fun place but where really important things happen well as it turns out the procrastinator has a guardian angel someone who always shows up just in the nick of time and this person is called the panic monster and the panic 
Panic Monster is dormant most of the time, but he suddenly wakes up when there's a deadline, a career disaster or public embarrassment to be had. And he's the only thing the monkey is terrified of. And this monster became re very relevant in mine and Claire's life pretty recently, as Danny Wells reached out to us and asked us to do a talk for this Leadership Day. Of course, we said yes, what an honour, and the rational decision maker got to thinking. We need to plan this now, so we arranged a Zoom call, and then after chatting, logged off and started Googling the career and relationship history of Mr Bloom from CBBS finishing up going on Google Maps and trying to find the rudest street name I could find. Clara, your kid's gone. No, they're fine. They're, they're gone. <laughs> okay, it's Bellend in Williston by the way. So five weeks <laughs> turned into four, then three, and then two, and then one. And eek, the night before the event, yes, yesterday, and guess who woke up? So the panic monster starts losing his mind, and a few seconds later, the whole brain is in mayhem and remember the monkey is terrified of the panic monster so boom he's up off the tree and finally the rational decision maker can take the wheel and start driving and getting things done now the procrastinator's brain does explain why someone like me can leave things until the last minute then suddenly find the motivation to stay up all evening to get things done month end everyone but in the end this system does work now, what we've realised from talking to others is that it seems pretty common. Lots of people are procrastinators, which isn't such a problem when there's a deadline, but there's a second type of procrastinator, the non-deadline procrastinator. So we're talking about people with their own business, entrepreneurs, people like us. There's no real deadlines unless you've gone out and done some hard work to get things going, to get some momentum, really. So there's also other things outside of your career that can suffer, like seeing your family, exercising, taking care of your health, or working on your relationships. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually, Emma. Um, now, if the procrastinator's only trigger to get things done in, is a deadline when the panic monster um, shows up, then that is just not going to happen if you've got no deadline. So the effects of procrastination will just go on forever, and it's this long-term procrastination, which we need to be careful of, as it can cause long-term unhappiness and regrets. Frustration isn't that these people who suffer from this can't achieve their dreams, it's that they actually never get started with their dreams. Sam! Honestly, honestly, come on. So some of you may be pretty good with deadlines and getting things done, but the monkey's sneakiest trick is when you don't have a deadline. So what we're showing you now is a life calendar. So each box is a month and each row is three years of your life. And that doesn't seem like that long, especially since Claire's more than a third of the way through. And we really need to think about what we are procrastinating on as everyone is putting something off and tell yourself there's no time like the present so start getting the things you need to do to get done today well maybe not today i might start tomorrow thank you thank you oh let me stop sharing come on There you go. Fantastic. It was just as funny second time round as it was the first time as well. That was brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both for doing that again. How did which one felt more nervous doing it on stage yesterday or doing it on Zoom today? Uh stage, I think. What do you think, Emma? Uh, yeah, stage, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Zoom's not, Zoom doesn't feel like real life. <laughs> well, I'm Monopoly, not real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, going, it's going out on YouTube. That yeah, is I'm real life. Going to view this. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you both again. That was, that was fabulous. Okay, so our third and beautiful final speaker is Sammy Joe Lewis. So Sammy, if
is going to talk to us today about hearing the emotions in your messages. So Sammy did a fabulous call for us the other week uh, where we all sort of had some relaxation, really worked with ourselves. So she was just fantastic and talked about our cloak of invisibility. I, I think that was what it was called. She might, no, she's like, no, it's not. Our cloak, the cloak of something, protection or something like that, confidence. Is that what it was? It was amazing. I've, I've used it. I just didn't know what it was called. So she's talking to us today. Again, she's a fabulous trainer and she's going to speak to us, as I just said, district manager, Sammy Jo Lewis, hearing the emotions in your messages. Right. I'm going to share my screen with you because I made a little, um, a little slideshow. But um, this is adapted from... Um, the, it's actually adapted from the prenatal parenting program that I teach, um, but I'm not going to talk about pregnant people or anything like that, so don't worry. Um, it's just a small snippet of that. Um, so I kind of had a little bit of a, a rush through it today. Um, I definitely did my procrastinator and had my panic monster on this afternoon after doing my wedding fair. So, right, I'll get round to actually doing the training. Um, share my screen with you. Okay, do what you need to do. There we go. Okay, perfect. Right, so this is basically what I'm going to talk about. Um, all our emotions are useful. And then we're going to look at um, the messages in your emotions, not the emotions in your messages, as Danny's been saying, bless her, um, but the messages in your emotions and the impact that those unresolved emotions have on us. So it's important to sort of understand that all our emotions are useful. The only so-called bad emotions are sort of misunderstood, um, and, but actually they're a nature's built-in guidance system. They keep us on the right path. So when we're feeling in sync, those, those emotions are what's keeping us there on the right path. Um, when we're not, um, it's our emotions that are attempting to sort of pull us back and tell us that we're not fulfilling something. And we get that sort of discomfort from them. And that's there to motivate us to take whatever action it is that we need to take in order to do something about it. But so many of us are taught from a young age that not all of our emotions are acceptable and that we need to suppress some of them because they're not attractive or, you know, they're, they're, they're things that we, sh we shouldn't be feeling. And um, I'm sure many of you have heard that sort of stiff upper lip, keep your chin up, um, it's not ladylike to get angry, big boys don't cry, that sort of thing. Um, don't be a big girl's blouse, put a brave face on it. I'm no doubt you've known many, many more sayings like that, um, that we've heard, you know, throughout the years and growing up, we've heard those things. But when we don't respond to our feelings usefully, we feel out of sync. And there's like this incompatibility with how we respond and what we actually want to do. We end up feeling out of control. And difficult feelings when they're acknowledged and valued lose their reactive power and they can actually be transformed into helpful emotions um, so they do disturb fear within us and but with sort of that understanding and acceptance you know we can feel in control no matter what is happening to us so we're going to look at some of those um emotions now and basically what they're actually telling us and how we can use them um, in our lives so that rather than actually having them suppressed within us. One, two things. There we go. Anger. So anger. I want to make sure that I and those around me are treated fairly. Okay. So imagine for a moment that you never get angry. You've never felt angry, okay? You could so quite easily become life's format. Um, in fact, you probably actually know 
some people who are like that, who, who have been told never to show anger. And so they don't. And, you know, people just walk all over them. Anger actually makes us stand up for ourselves and it helps us to make sure that we and those around us are treated fairly. Now, don't confuse anger with violence. Violence is anger gone wrong. Um, but using anger in a way that actually creates that sense of fairness around you is really, really important. The next one is guilt. I want to make sure that I I'm being fair to others and make something right. So this is one of the most misused and misunderstood emotions because so often people lay guilt upon us and they believe that we should be acting in a certain way, behaving in a certain way, doing what they want us to do. Now, actually, as long as we aren't deliberately doing something malicious to hurt someone, then it's not true their happiness is not our responsibility um, we should only really feel guilty if we've actually done something wrong to somebody or been unfair to them in some way sadness i need time to heal i think this one's really is a really hard one for a lot of people um, and you know what actually happens when we feel sad we have chemical changes that occur in our brain um, that physically release the pain people say that like time heals everything and in a manner of speaking that's very true and um, because that's what the brain needs to release that pain um, depending on what type of hurt it is you know it might take many 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 years or a really strong network around you of support. And in some circumstances, you know, that sadness never goes away. And, you know, that can be really appropriate too, because we want to remember, you know, so we, we always hold on to that sadness. And, you know, that sadness is actually built within other emotions and other feelings that we have around what happened. Um, but, you know, that properly handled sadness really help us to move on um, to a new life and that sort of enables us to let go and to make new contact with people and new experiences. Loneliness. I think, you know, especially from yesterday's um, Leadership Academy, I think a lot, a lot of us have felt this and you know and a lot of us reached out to Arbonne because of this and it, it, it was it's, it's been a, a driving force and I think that you know a lot of us really do recognize that you know loneliness can be a real in driving factor in our lives and actually lead us on to much better things so I want to share my life with others and have meaningful relationships so if we go to survival and we think about survival, if we never felt lonely, we would never have been driven to uh, be with others and um, procreation wouldn't have occurred. So it's kind of important. Um, we're social beings. So loneliness just tells us that we need to go out, meet other like-minded people, other individuals and seek out those meaningful relationships. Inadequate. So I want to do and be the best that I can. So sadly, the inadequacy most often comes from others telling us, um, generally when we were younger, um, that we weren't good at something or um, more likely a lot of things. Sometimes it might be that we were pitted against a sibling or a classmate or, you know, and, and it might have been completely innocent, sometimes not necessarily, you know, but it, it sort of highlighted gaps in our ability and, you know, we carry that with us. But the true meaning of inadequacy is that actually we want to do better for ourselves and it's nothing to do with others. It's all about us. Stress. I want to feel in control of my life. We live in a very stressful world. Um, and, you know, 
in reality, most of it's probably our own making, but you know, our head creates our world, as you say. And often stress can actually come from us not using our emotions usefully in the first place. So all those ones we've just spoken about, you know, not using those, um, not using those in a constructive way, actually stress becomes part of that. So hopefully from, you know, some of the things from this and recognizing those messages in your emotions, you can gain back that control and, and, and rid yourself of that stress that's feeling out, making you feel out of control. So fear, I want to feel safe. Um, you know, fear is extremely important for us on a survival um, level. And if we didn't feel fear, we would just cross the road and we wouldn't check that there was a car coming or not. Um, and so fear keeps us safe. It slows us down. It forces us to stop and think and avoid danger. Now, our gut instinct is you know, has is perceived something long before the conscious brain even understands what it is. And so that fear is there to help us. Now, excessive worry and anxiety, that's fear gone wrong. But, you know, it's often a direct result of us not listening to those messages again. So, you know, it's really great for us to, to listen to those. Right, boredom. I want my life to be more interesting. Um, not sort of short bouts of boredom, but just generally, you know, our whole life situation. And it, may, it gets you to make changes and go, actually, I want to do that instead. So I'll do that. Thank you. Um, frustration. I need to change my course of action. Anytime you're feeling frustrated, most likely means that you're going round in circles, repeating the same thing over and over and going nowhere. Um, there's a quote by Henry Ford that says, um, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And so frustration sort of tells us to, well, do something different. Anything's better than sort of repeating a pattern that isn't working. We certainly know that. And we, we talk about that so much within this business, you know, that if, if you, if you carry on doing what you're doing now, will you, will, will you get any further in life? Will you get to where you want to be, you know? do you need to change something and the last one we're going to sort of look at is depression so um, I'm not referring to clinical depression that's a very different thing but um, depression is an emotion that we can generally feel um, I need to take time to rest and recuperate until I feel able once again to focus on what I want okay so sometimes life does give us hard knocks it does throw us curveballs and we do need to deal with it we need to take time out it's so important to listen to this message to have a rest and to chill and to really focus on yourself and take that time for you so unresolved messages then emotions those unresolved issues from our past they actually can be stored in our subconscious mind and then they're held in our body on a cellular level. Um, they create something called emotional resonance. And that means that we respond to similar events in our current life or you know, potentially in the future um, in the same way that we did in the past with the same emotions, use them in the way that we did in the past. And that causes that internal stress within us. Um, so it's something that we find ourselves, you know, sometimes we look at ourselves and go, oh, you know, I actually think I really overreacted in that situation. Or even other people, we think, oh, they really overreacted in that situation. And that isn't, maybe it seems, you think, oh, it wasn't such a big deal. But actually, it's that emotional resonance. It's that it's what's been stored from past experiences because you hadn't used those emotions in the way that you were in control of them. So it's sort of easy to see how those unresolved issues from the past, those sorts of worries about the future, um, can prevent you from feeling positive in your current life. And so, you know, 
that can impact upon the way we um, are with our families, in our business, the way that we feel about ourselves. And, you know, the more that we sort of look for the messages in our emotions, the less that will happen. Um, if anybody, I just want to make a little note here, if anybody does feel like they've got really deep um, unresolved issues, then a support of a suitable therapist is really important. So, I've been really kind to you and I've given you homework. It's not actually homework. Um, well, it's just something that you can do at home if you want to do it. Um, I'll put it on the um, basic team training page so that everybody's got it. Um, and they can see this, but just take 10 minutes and you can do this whenever you want to just reflect on how you are using those messages in your emotions. Take 10 minutes to draw how you're feeling about your business, your family life, work, anything, anything really that's going on in your life. And just, just draw it, just, just draw out whatever's going on and write your feelings against the images. And then, um, write down that list and actually go through what the message is in that emotion. What, what, what is that? What is that? What are those feelings about that situation telling you about, you know, how you want to respond to it and think about how you actually are currently responding to it and how you, what you could change if, if anything at all and how you might go about that. So yeah. So enjoy doing your homework. I'll put that on the basic team training page for you. Thank you. I would like to leave this city. This old town don't smell too pretty. Fantastic, Sammy. I don't know if you've read the chat yet. You probably haven't because you've been obviously training, but everyone loved that. That was brilliant. And I absolutely think you need to be on the stage training at the next Leadership Academy. I can lip read you saying okay. I'm gonna hold that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mute myself. Yeah, okay, I will. <laughs> you are just you're just a really great speaker and a really great trainer. You do deliver things in such an easy to way, easy to understand way. And I'm sorry I got your title wrong. So thank you for looking for the messages in your emotions. I wrote it down to make sure that I didn't get it wrong. Thank you. <laughs> right, so that concludes our weekly area training. Thank you so much for our three speakers tonight. Well, four actually, sorry. Three slots, but four speakers. So I'm gonna end the call. It is recorded, so I'll pop the recording up, and then we've got the nine o'clock Zoom call which is um, where everybody gets on. So I'm going to tell you the code for the nine o'clock one. It is 337-600-0859. And it's Nikki Marchant that's hosting tonight's call. So there'll be recognition from everything from the past week. And what she's doing tonight is she's asking all of the speakers from leadership just to give a little overview of their training from yesterday so that everybody that wasn't there can take a little bit from yesterday and everybody that was there can just be reminded. So that's what she's doing on tonight's training. So thank you so much, everybody. Oh, and Danny, can you do the um, Zoom call uh, code again? Yeah, of course. 337. Yeah. 600. Yeah. 0859. Yay! Right, see you all at nine o'clock! Bye!